Wanderers, welcome to the Wandering Dutchman podcast. Thanks for joining us on a little Friday variety show where we talk about whatever we want to talk about. And it's all brought to you by Chad Blessinger and Blessinger Insurance. Today's episode is brought to you by Blessinger Insurance. September is National Life Insurance Awareness Month, and our buddy Chad Blessinger with Blessinger Insurance wants to clear up some myths about life insurance. One myth is that you should get life insurance once you're older. Wrong. Buy that life insurance now, when you're younger and healthier, where costs will be their lowest. Another myth is that life insurance is too expensive. Wrong again. Depending on your application and health screening, life insurance can be quite affordable. Life insurance is all about planning and taking care of your loved ones. Nothing can ever replace you, but your family shouldn't have to worry about paying the bills or buying the groceries. If you're young and have a family and haven't had the life insurance conversation with a trusted agent yet, let Chad Blessinger help you today. The Wandering Dutchman Podcast. Where none of us are Dutch, but we all live in Holland, Indiana. Join us where we talk about what we all wonder about. This is the Wandering Dutchman Podcast coming to you from... Are we down at Holland Park for Overboard? Or are we in Smoker's Lounge? Bum, bum, bum. Cue the music, big fella. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the greatest show to ever take stage at Holland Park. All right, boys, overboard! Oh, I'm just practicing for uh, what's going to happen a little bit later from when you're listening to this, folks. It is the Wandering Dutchman podcast coming to you from our buddy Smoker's Lounge, where if the light's on, we're always in here opened. For you to come join us for a little bit of company, it's the Friday Variety Show where we talk about a little bit of this and a little bit of that with no real direction of where we're going. And thankfully, our buddy Chad Blessinger of Blessinger Insurance had said, hey, I'm going to present this show to you all, you all out there in listener land, and thus he has. If you're in need of some insurance from home, auto, anything else, Chad does it. Chad's a fan of the show. Big fan. Big fan of the show, so we're glad to have him. And, of course, we're here to the Ice Cold Opener, brought to you by Celebration Ice and our buddy Mark Seibert. Not Seibert. Seibert. That's right. Also a fan of the show. Just because summer's pretty much behind us, that doesn't mean your ice needs are behind you. Listen, coolers don't just miraculously keep drinks cold, and it isn't cold enough just to leave them outside yet. Enter Celebration Ice. Your tailgate or family gathering is not complete without ice with attitude. Stop by anywhere you see the ice chests outside with Celebration Ice real big on them. Inside that chest lies what you need for ice-cold refreshments. Also the official ice provider of the Corn Ferry Tour Championship. Hey, being held at French Lake Resort. Pretty cool. I mean, I think that that's cool. probably second fiddle to official ice provider of the Wandering Dutchman podcast. This is true. And then when we... Second fiddle. <laughs> when we send our big asses into the freezer room to record yeah. an episode. Yeah, how many of those corn fairy fellas can say that yeah probably none of them you think we'd have to wear hair nets in there it's ice i doubt it okay i, don't I mean we're gonna be like swimming melt. in it oh what if there was uh, i'm not an ice bath i'm guy. out okay what way to be a team player hey let's do some introductions i'm esquire and then joining me across from the table if he were to walk into the city of Huntingburg street department and say i quit they would be devastated it's our buddy with the mustache and the turtle shell colored glasses with the little mess of hair up top that's kind of got that little Cali boy blonde look to it because mm-hmm. the summer has come and gone, but it's still hot out there. It's our buddy, Big Mace. Hey, guys. Sitting there in the middle with the rose colored glasses, throwing up a little business card of stop on it. It's our buddy with the turquoise turtle and the turquoise rings. And if you get in his way when he's jamming out to overboard tonight, you may meet. You could meet the turquoise turtle if it goes with the headlock. You could have an imprint on your freaking forehead to that son bitch. Mm-hmm. But you might meet them rings. It's our buddy Smoke. Hello. Fellas, we were wrong. Mm. I was wrong. It happens. I just saw something the other day. Oh, I guess we didn't do the ice cold opener. 
I was just getting ready to jump right into it. Well, it's the high school opener right now. Yeah. Well, I mean, no, we can talk about it on the Friday variety. You got anything, big fella? No. For the opener? Yeah. Uh, nope. If you're listening to this in real time, it's Friday the 13th. Spooky dookie ookie ookie. You better get your ass down to the Holland Fest tonight. I'll give you a spooky dookie. You get down to the Holland Fest tonight and uh, <laughs> get ready to jam out with your clam out and uh, rock out with your cock out because the overboard is going to rip the stage apart, boys. It's going to be a good time. I am ready for it. I'm excited for it. I think they're going to rip the freaking. They're going to. Their, tear their down new the album part. is dropping that day. Did you know Today, that? you mean today? Yeah, today, the 13th. I am curious if we're going to get invited. We're really going to test our salt to see if we bring enough of a crowd. Because I could see this maybe getting slightly slightly louder than maybe it did last year. and We could ruffle a feather. Yeah. Listen. But I think we're bringing enough. I think we're bringing enough to buy a Listen. little bit of late, late if, noise ordinance. If our friends at Holland Events... Say, hey, listen, you guys just, we You're not will. what we're about. Yeah, well, you know we're a little bit uh, unkempt. We're kind of like a oh, yeah. barn cat. Yeah. Everybody likes a barn cat when they need them unkempt. rodents. Unkempt, I like that. Them rodents killed. But Everybody wants a barn cat till it's time to do barn cat shit. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And uh, going yeah, around we, spraying cat f everywhere. <laughs> if not, you know, I got a big field there on ten twenty five. Yeah, we will build a stage. They could probably yeah. just come right here and plug and play. Mm-hmm. They yeah. probably could. We just open the doors on Smokers Lounge. Yeah. All of move them. the speakers to the front. Yeah. That'd be a while. Mm-hmm. Oh, my goodness. The neighborhood would be alive. Hey, by the way, an updated weather report for today. A week High away. High of 84, low of 62. Ooh, perfect. 20% chance of rain, but that's normal at this time. The evening's going to be partly cloudy, low of 62, with winds eastward at 5 to 10 miles an hour. I if tell that, you what, quick math, that sounds like 100% for the beer metric pressure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's going to be a good time. Oh, should be good cabin Good sleep. Good time. cabin sleeping, too. It will be. Mm. Oh, Big fella? Uh, not a whole lot. Uh, September 3rd, uh, Tyler Mahan Co.'s book finally released, Cocaine and Rhinestones, based on season two of the podcast, Cocaine and Rhinestones. It's all about Tammy Wynette and George Jones. Right. Okay. So I've been getting into that. That's pretty exciting stuff to read about. Uh, his uh, prelogue or preface or whatever you want to call it there. Prologue? That's the one. He goes into saying, hey, this is to break down the walls. Everybody thinks they were this hunky-dory, happy, uh, in-love couple. And basically, he's going to put it all out there on what really happened and all the heartbreak and how sad and terrible the lives were. And uh, and he says something to the effect of, and hopefully a manner that you will never forget any of this. Oh, wow. And the, and the podcast is pretty – I really like that. That's probably my favorite podcast, next to The Wandering Dutchman, of course. Uh, Cocaine so anyway. and rhinestone. Mm-hmm. Good stuff. David Allen Coe's son, Tyler. Tyler. Was Tyler the Coe. Guitar player for David Allen Coe for many, many moons. Hmm. Now he's a podcaster. Huh, creeping into our Don't territory. Bone music. Yeah. Uh, Cocaine and rhinestones. And then the other one's your favorite band, Sucks. And Ooh. he just goes into all these bands that everybody loves and just tears them apart about why they're so terrible. <laughs> That's fun. Hey, you got any update on the podcast that you talked about last week? Or we could get to it after that. I haven't, no, well, I haven't been back. I haven't been back to it. I haven't had time. I haven't been back uh, in the saddle to uh, do any. I haven't been uh, able to do any podcasts. And, you know, that uh, seems like in your new uh, Masoner's Lounge, you ought to be able just to tune one up there. And yeah, I mean, I could. Clean guns or whatever. Yeah. Or just, you know, cook and, yeah. and cook. I was going to sleep on the couch the other day, but it was it was pretty hot. Pretty, pretty hot. Pretty warm in there. Going to need you a window shaker yeah. for next year. Do you yeah. think that's in your best interest to sleep out there in the old... Uh... Were you going to take the CPAP? Oh, yeah. For sure, dude. <laughs> yeah. That's a hide-a-bed on that couch. That cou- I have a couch in my garage now, and it's a hide-a-bed. So no like, fears of, like, cat piss? Well, or? see, Dave said the same thing. What are you going to do to keep the cats off of it? But realistically, there's only one cat that comes in that garage. 
And it's Black Cat. And it's David Allen Smoker. No, it's it's a black. It's her name is Black Cat. Uh, she's a small little female calico. You guys did a good job on that naming. And uh, well, uh, my kids did it there, prick. Uh, mm-hmm. But she uh, she's fixed and everything like that. So and, and I've been doing a good job of keeping the doors shut. You know, so <laughs> we need to get the <laughs> internet. Did. What do you mean, internet? The buried. doors are wide open. No. No, they're not. Come over right now, and the doors are shut. Wide open. Not a chance. Okay. I'll bet your paycheck on it. It's gone anyways. Uh, yeah, I know. I've been, I've been trying to think of ways to do it without really getting involved. I thought we had a pretty good plan. How is that? Just the PVC and the, you know, subsoiler. Oh, you're going to need more PVC. Right, but, like, what are we going to subsoil with? Oh, I don't know. I have you tried to put a shovel in the ground lately? God, I wouldn't use a shovel. Uh, what would you use then? Has your neighbor got a grater blade that tilts? Well, I got a bucket that tilts. No, 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 no. Um, that's the wrong direction. Uh, no, it's rotates. Not. You could just gouge in. Well, right. So, it, so my my grater blade, yeah, I can so, also go. Yeah, like a lot this. of roots in that neck of the but woods. But you don't need to go deep. But you put that corner down and just pull. You can kind of cut you a V in the in the mm-hmm. soil there. Yeah, I think as long as you were probably three or four inches deep subsurface, just enough to get that one inch conduit covered up. You'd be yeah, good. half inch conduit. Yeah. Well, that's inside. The outside's about an inch, I think. I reckon. Yeah, yeah about. Four what are you running long. out there? Uh, Ethernet cable. Uh, but yeah, we could do that. Or I thought about doing a. You could take an old. You could take a chainsaw and put the blade on backwards. Mm-hmm. Like sounds, an old shitty chain. Yeah, that sounds terrible though, still. I'll okay. just drive the tractor over one day. Yeah, drive it over. It uh, can't be much slower than that damn golf cart. My neighbor has one that's got a backhoe on it that we could just, like, scratch here and there, mm-hmm. you know, just scratch it up. That would work, too. Now, we might need the chainsaw to cut through a couple of those roots. Yeah, there are going to be some big ones in there. Uh, but I think we can make short work of it. You just got to commit to you – probably you can keep it through the window there in your bedroom and not hurt a dang thing. Don't want that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and weatherhead into the house. That's pro- I mean, that's the best way. Yeah. So I got an Ethernet cable that runs from my house to my garage now that powers the Internet that's in my garage, but mm-hmm. it's just laying on top of the ground. Yeah. Yeah. And Justine said that's no bueno. Like, yeah, that needs not, to go yeah. away immediately. So You know uh, what you could do? What's that? You could put up some, like, decorative lights. And then wrap it from across the edge the of the house. Light. And then wrap it. Because you could get black Ethernet cord. And then you could just wrap it. Aerial. You could make a little kind of look-see out of it. Would add a little bit Nobody of a feng shui. It was Nobody be any wiser. Cord. Feng yeah. shui. Just wrap it around the cord of the outdoor like Edison bulbs, you know. Yeah. Or I could just you know trench it in like we. Yeah, were yeah, yeah. That's better. I don't be forget. Gone. I even asked. Yeah. Uh, you know, I got to play a little golf this week up at the Ross. Put I in uh, played any golf. Carded. Uh, I have. Could have been sub ninety up there. Uh, just we were ninety two, but. Uh, Back there, that long par three on thirteen. It, Who was you scrambling with? Uh, no, I was just playing with my buddy Tyler, our buddy Tyler Jordan, mm. fan of the show. Yeah, Tyler Jordan. Uh, like playing your own ball, you say? Yeah, oh, but damn. Yeah. Um, Zoe had her tonsils out, so we had you know that was today. T's and P's. In in real time, uh, she's resting comfortably at home. Uh, Wait till her breath starts to stink. That's the worst part of the whole works. When those things like when like when their breath, so she'll she'll develop this um, these scars or scabs, right? So that like she'll develop these scabs, and then when those scabs start to do their thing in the healing process, the breath that comes out of those children, brutal, huh? Is putrid. Like Justine's siblings, all three had tonsillectomies back to back to back. Oh boy. And when you could walk into that house and it was god awful. Like yeah. you, you just you just it hit you like a ton of bricks. So our my uh, kids were the same way. It was it's it's bad. Our stanks. E N T was uh he was very adamant about make sure you have them eating like solid food yeah. to try to help break some of that up and kind of let it yeah. Not heal, but like... I do the old salt, salt water gargle and all that. And didn't say anything about it. No. But, uh, you know, not allow it to kind of get one big scab, but kind of continue to just 
rake the ground over a little bit. Mm -hmm. So, but that's it. That's yeah. all I got, and that's the ice there cold. There we opener. go. Big thank you there, Celebration Ice. Now we get into the show. Now I can say with complete confidence that I was wrong or we were wrong. I don't know where we're going to fall on this. I'm a big accountability guy, and here I am taking accountability. I thought that the Hawk Tua girl was going to be done before summer was over with her fame. No. She just signed Dave a one hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollar podcast deal mm -hmm. called Talk to a, mm -hmm. where she is now hosting a podcast. Dave, a hundred thousand dollars. Is that like a year? I, all of I just saw that it was just a hundred thousand mm. dollar podcast deal. Now, Talk it's to not a girl, Haley Welch, will give relationship pointers a new podcast called Talk to a. Oh, really? Because she's an expert. Yeah, her and her, her and Pookie. Who's Pookie? Her, the guy she's been diddling for a while. Yeah. Oh, Pookie's her man? Her ex-man. Because that was the question in the original interview. If you could say one thing to your ex, what would it be? And, and she said, I love you, Pookie, forever. <laughs> Some shit like that. I and thought Pookie like was her friend. No. And then it was like the big uh it was like the big internet search to find out who Pookie was. Oh, you guys invested a little she bit. She doesn't time. like to be called Hawk to a girl anymore. She just she would she prefers Haley. Haley, Haley Welch. Well, you know what? Mm -hmm. When this is how you got your fame, that's right. gonna kinda keep with you. And she's hot that you're doing guys. She's hot. No. Yeah, out. she's got them little boobies that she's got she's been putting a lot of photos where you can see her, like not her whole breast. Like she hasn't gone full frontal, but like her she's got a lot You've of You've really invested a lot yeah. more time well, in yeah, this. Yeah, it's thing. all over the internet. What do you mean? I spend a lot of time on the internet because like I'm a you know, like an internet guy. Like we do we do like an internet thing, you know, so we gotta kinda search around on the interwebs every now and then. But yeah, like she's she's <laughs> posting some photos that are I feel like she's on the cusp of it. Like of somebody, an OF? yeah, she's gonna go only stands one of these days. Yeah, well, good for her. Yeah, and um, then uh, I'm not gonna subscribe. Like I'm not a I'm not an OnlyFans guy. Like I'm not. I've never paid for an OnlyFans page. Do you know all. anybody that ha not naming names? Do you know anybody that has an OnlyFans subscription? Yes. Like openly, they've told you. Yes. Uh, husband and wife, like a couple, like they've, I don't know if they've paid for it or they just created an account together and like they just surf the free ones. Cause that's a thing too. Like not all only like fans pages are cost money. Well then what's the point? I don't know. Hmm. Cause there's a well, lot of traffic. I would have. Well, imagined. yeah. Like they're one percenters and they don't, you know what I mean? Like they've already made theirs and it's like, Hey, here's a teaser you got to pay your nine ninety nine to get the full meal deal. Well, type. but then some of them like they have pay per view and they have some other. So you so, subscribe, but then yeah. you may not get the goods. Exactly. So that's the thing. That's what they always say. Like the free, like the free. It doesn't. It's like an oxymoron. It's free pay per views, and then they also give free ratings and uh, all these other things. They will uh, rate. Yeah, they'll rate your uh, uh, unit if yeah. you wanted them there to, to rate. That would be a pretty sad score. To, to rate you. Yeah, I wouldn't score very <laughs> high either. I'm sorry, <laughs> buddy. I wouldn't. So the Hawk Tua girl, uh, Haley Welch, she's also, like, she's made, like, there's all kinds of shit on here now. Like, she's with Sketch. She's with. Uh, Sketch survived his little yeah, thing on there. Who, who gives a shit? I mean, guy's got to do what a guy's got to do. If a bear's hungry, he'll eat. But, like, she's on, like, Jake Paul. Has been on there with her so President far. President Trump's been on Jake Paul. Yeah. President Trump's been making, he sat down with uh, our boy Theo Vaughn. He played golf with Bryson DeChambeau and tried that to do break a break 50. 50. Do you watch break 50s with that Bryson DeChambeau? I've just seen clips. I have been there. watching the shit out of it. That's what I was watching the other day when Dave swung over to check out the trophies. But I said, I'm all in on it, and I've been watching the hell out of it, which brings me to my next thing. Do you guys... I know we talk about golf a lot, but do you do you consume very much like golf content on the internet? Like, do you? I know you probably don't, Dave. Do you? I don't consume any content on. I mean, I listen to music on YouTube. Other than that, I I, I don't even really TikTok or anything anymore. 
Really? I've been reading a lot. And then uh, editing a, our podcast, and that's plenty of interneting for me. Yeah. Yeah, that is... Uh, I, I spend a lot of time on Marketplace, on the Face Space Marketplace, if that counts. Any good deals lately? It's pretty sweet campers. Been looking for stereo equipment uh, just because... You've big, been working for stereo equipment for Big Fellow over there. Well, yeah, that's how it started. Yeah. But then, uh, you know, you always think maybe this could be a little bigger, a little better. That's Dave, that's the best thing about you. You're always working to try to improve. Mm-hmm. You're never happy with current Dave. No, nope. you've got to be the best be version better. of yourself. That's what you got to yep. be. So to answer your question on consuming golf content, yes. Yeah. To so, a certain extent. Right. I'm sorry. I'm I'm predisposed here. I'm getting my ass ripped by the warden as we speak on the on the on text oh, message. How's that time? going? Well, just, you want to read it out? Uh, no. Okay. Uh, but no. So I've been watching the hell out of Bryson DeChambeau on the internet. That dude is a freaking stick. Like he can play the hell out of some golf. Now, when I say that, I like his style and his swagger because it's like he seems like he would be a really cool dude just to go out and play golf with. But he always he wasn't always that way. Was he not? There was a lot of uh, talk, like when he was first on tour, probably pre live. People that just were like, who is this kind of, they didn't understand or know him. And so then he's gone to live where he's not on camera all the time Yeah, because live is on the CW and I didn't even know the CW carried sports, which is the CW. It's just that Chicago, like, like I feel like it used to be WGN way back. No, CW has always been, it's, it's kind of like the redheaded stepchild child of like nbc abc cbs and fox the cw yes yeah. huh. the cw Chicago. tv they they carry uh the live hmm. they carry the live on uh weekends but um so it was just kind of one of those deals but i don't know uh i don't know i mean it's just he's gone away from being on the PGA Tour to the live that doesn't have the coverage, but he's started this YouTube channel for people to probably understand that, you know, like it's that guy that you first see and you're like, oh, that guy's such a loser. Like, what a dork. Like, who would actually be like that? And then you see, like, that's not a front. Like, that guy's legit, like, genuine, and he's kind of got that geeky side. Like, that's how he's – his golf swing was built in a lab. His clubs are built in a lab. Like, you know, they're, they're 3D, 3D printed. printing shit. Did you know yeah. that? Did you know that, Dave? Mm-hmm. I thought that was wild. So I was – I've ordered – I ordered a Jumbo Max. So he's he is sponsored by Jumbo Max Grips. Yeah. I was watching a Break 50, the one that he did with John Daly. That guy's a – an animal. He's a rocket. It's an animal. And and did you see his? Did you? So that's one that you need to watch. You need to watch the break fifty with Bryson DeChambeau and John Daly, and look at John Daly's mm-hmm. cart, like the his own golf cart that they play on Hickory, like that the the John Daly's home course. Yeah. And like it's Diet a cokes and cigarettes. No way. Good boys. He's got his own line of drinks now. Oh. It's it's a it's a non carbonated, like. I would only assume it'd be like a lemonade sweet tea type thing with vodka in it because like a, a an Arnold Palmer is just a, regu- a regular... The joke always was that John Daly is an Arnold Palmer with, with vodka. vodka. Yeah, so like it's something along those lines, but it's not carbonated because he said like a seltzer or a high noon or all these other like long drinks, these other cocktails, they're, they're like ultra carbonated and it, you know, he said it bloats you up and it gives you the, hits you in the jowls and all that stuff and he talks about how this is the best... I don't understand the hit you in the jowls comment. What do you mean? Like, I don't get it. Like, when you drink a really cold high noon, it doesn't ever get you, like, back here? Like, the carbonation don't ever get you there? No. Okay. Anyway, uh, but, yeah, um, so, but anyway, he said he's talked about, he said, you you know, the only reason that we do these, these break 50s is to help amateurs become better golfers. And he was talking about how Bryson DeChambeau's clubs, like everything from his wedges up to his five iron, are the same length. Like his yeah, because it's the one plane. It's the one, one plane, one plane swing. swing. Yeah. So like his his wedges, his fifty six degree, sixty degree, all them, literally the same length as his five iron, all the way up. 
And then, of course, from five up, you know, they're they're obviously longer. You know what I mean? Stuff like that. But John Daly was then saying, oh, you know, with the huge grips. And he said, that's a thing that a lot of people take for granted. Don't waste your time on, you know, before you waste your time on getting fitted for clubs and buying all these $10 million clubs and all that stuff. He said, you really need to go get fitted for your grip. That's Be- what we were talking about last week. Yeah. Because he said, if your grip... When you take your golf club away, and if there is a space between your your like your right hand and the golf club, then your left hand's going to come away, and you're not going to have full control of the club. So I don't know. I was I just been watching some stuff. Uh, you going to get those ones I gave you regripped? Mm-hmm. I believe I am. Good. Yes, sir. I'm trying to decide if I'm going to mess with it now. Or just finish out the last two times I'm probably going to get to play this year. and then We need to get it on the books with our buddy, Curdy G. Mm-hmm. Why is it that you think you're only going to play golf two more times? Uh, I've gonna, only played twice all year, I think, or three times. So I'm going to guess the Velpen Open. Velpen Disposal. I don't think that's a thing. I, I really don't. I really don't think it's a thing. Like, we need to reach out and find out if, it's, if it is a thing. Because I think... I thought we had talked about it, and then that was the possibility, and then it came back and said, no, we're going to allow it to happen. Or they were going to do it. I don't know. I'm just... It's a mystery. We'll have to find out from this our buddy Chops and figure it out. Big fan of the show, Chops. Oh, yeah. Huge uh, contributor. Yeah, but I assume we're going to go off with Curdy G once. And uh, Jenna asked something about... This Herbs Fest thing. Scramble. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm supposed to play in that. Uh, Who are you going to play with Net? I think my wife. Maybe the smoke. I don't know. Oh, are you? Well, so she asked if you wanted to play because her and Justine were going to play with somebody and then these other bodies backed out. So she said, do you and Mace want to play? And I said, I have no idea if maybe Mace is already playing. I don't know. I said, sure, I'll play if there's a spot. You know, that's fine. And when's that? That's the end of September, I guess, like That's the 28th or weekend. something. Yeah. It's the weekend before porch party. So that'd be two. So, yeah, two, three times maybe. That's good. We need to talk to Curdy G. We are, <laughs> that may be a good test run to uh, mic up, figure out a way to do that. We might have to talk to our buddy Curtis Crow on that one, figure that out. I've got lapel mics, but – we got to find a way to link them all together, which I think that's an issue. I, like mine, I don't think you can only go two at a time. You know mm-hmm, what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Dave, I got something uh, that I, when I was on the um, Twitter interwebs, mm-hmm. music related, mm-hmm. that Linkin Park just announced Emily Armstrong as their new singer. So they're replacing... Uh, was it Benning, Bennington? Was Chester, that his? Chester's been dead a while, though. Yeah. Yeah, but they're replaced. They've replaced. They've named a replacement about that somewhere. Yeah, and I think it's what was her name? Emily, Emily Armstrong. I don't know her name, but I remember seeing. Oh, that sounds like a, a change of. Uh, yeah. Direction maybe. Not yeah. Direction, but. You know who's been popping up on my TikTok a lot lately that that I that I really kind of like. Who's that? The lead, I can't think of her name ever, but the league singer of Evanescence. Yeah, I like, I always liked Evanescence back in the day, but I don't know her name. I don't know, but she, like, I've seen a lot of, uh, of, of like Evanescence clips. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. How do you even spell Evanescence? Evan, so E V A N. Yeah, it's right there. E S E N S C E, I think. That's her. Yeah, it's pretty good. Wow. Uh, Dave, also another headline grab that I saw. The Government Accountability Office estimates the federal government loses between $233 billion to $521 billion annually to fraud based on data from 2018 to 2022. That's roughly 2% of America's GDP stolen Amy. every year and trillion dollars lost for those years. Yeah, that sounds probably about about right, I would say. When I saw that, I thought, and that's just lost and not wasted. Yeah, well, the mm-hmm. waste is even higher. And that's a not. By the way, this is a. It's the U.S. Government Accountability Office, which I didn't know was a real thing because I didn't know that government was necessarily held accountable. Now, isn't that funny? There, we're paying salaries for people to tell us how bad they are at doing their job, but nowhere in there they're saying how they're going to fix this. It's well, we don't have awesome. a U.S. Government Solutions Office. Yeah, that's, we maybe that's what's ought to, next. Uh, we ought to maybe work on that a little tax bit. Tax for that. Yeah, we'll get we that ought to. Books. 
we ought to maybe make that I'm work. I'm going to run for president someday. Shit, yeah, me too. I'll be your running mate. Oh, yeah, I'm just going there. And what do you plan to do? Little as possible. Your state should cover it. That's what I'm going to tell them. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. Going to do so little. I'm going to take a pay cut, go to the White House, and I have to be most time I'll hang out here in Holland so we can do the podcast. <laughs> Why don't we just go to the White House and do it there? Ah. It's probably way cooler there, huh? Hell no. I don't believe it's it. It's awful, awful populated. Yeah, pretty real uh, pro- property of it. Property. Probably prairie every day. Yeah, yeah. We'll just hang out here in Holland. We'll get we'll get Kid Rock to come up. I feel like if I was a president, he'd come hang out. Oh, Kid Rock, come out and sing a few songs. Mm-hmm. Hell That'd yeah. be pretty cool. There's nothing wrong with that. Hell no, nothing wrong with that at all. Well, there we are, fellas. Before we get to the rest of it, let's take a quick pause for the cause. Brought to you by Dubois County Tire and Supply. As fall approaches, ease into the season by preparing your vehicle for the Jeep runs, tailgating fun, and that good old country cruise. Now's the time to check the treads on those tires and make sure your vehicle is ready to keep you comfortable as we go from the heat of summer to the chill of fall. Timely service can save you trouble down the road. The process to get in at Dubois County Tire and Supply is quick and easy. Friendly service as soon as you enter the door paired with an experienced and knowledgeable staff makes for a winning combination. Don't forget to check out their unbelievable deals on Mastercraft tires for your ride. Give Dubois County Tire and Supply a call today. We're big or small, they service it all. And we're back. Hey, big thank you to Dubois County Tire and Supply. We appreciate that uh, quick pause there. And if you're needing some new uh, treads for the old vehicle out there, those Mastercraft, that's what uh, is on the old Polar Bear out there. Uh, pretty nice tires holding up well thus far. And we slide right into Braddo's three big things brought to you by the ultimate destination for meat enthusiasts. You know them as Merkley and Sons. Have you been to a tailgate recently where the food spread was less than subpar? Did you have a hard time identifying what kind of burger or dog was on the bun? Well, don't suffer in silence anymore. Be the host or the guest with the most. Head to Merkley's before your next tailgate and get their world-famous snap dogs, seasoned burger patties, or flavored brats. Merkley & Sons is the ultimate destination for meat enthusiasts for a reason. Now, don't suffer at tailgates anymore. Make a trip to Merkley's before you head to the game and stock up. All right, fellas, here we go. We got some good ones. 83. 83. That's how many hot dogs and buns Joey Chestnut devoured in 10 minutes during Netflix's Labor Day eating contest, breaking his own world record. Braddo says this headline just screams a Dutchman topic, so let's hear it. How many, if your loved ones depended on it, could you scarf down? P.S. I tried this in college once. It did not end well. I don't know. I don't know what I could do with uh, a bunch of hot dogs. Like I don't. I don't know if I could hang. Like I. I mean, I. I think I could probably go really strong out of the gate. But ten minutes is an eternity. That's all you have. What do you mean? Ten minutes? Did yeah. he ate eighty of them in ten minutes? Yeah, he 83, ate 80, yeah. eighty-three. I could. Yeah. I could. I bet I'd be good for three or four, maybe. In ten minutes, Dave. Yeah. Like if you with really buns. Yeah. Yeah. Like okay. I think, um, what is uh, 4th of July? How long is that one? It's the same thing. 10 minutes? Because didn't you say they're not like little shit dogs? They're like big hot dogs? They're Nathan's. Well, it used to be Nathan's. They're bun size. They're the bun size dogs, so they're not the Nathan's. big ones. That's why he doesn't. Uh, That's why it's on Netflix. Chestnut doesn't do it on the, on the Nathan's. Oh, because you went to veggie dogs or something. Something like that, or he, he broke a Veggie con- something. Some kind of endorsement. Sounds like they didn't. Now, I don't know how many veggie dogs I could eat. Probably the same amount as regular dogs. Probably as much as you could shove in your ass at one time. Freaking losers. Oh boy. I uh I would probably I would probably hold my own for a while, but I, I think I would get full quick and then like I'm not doing that whole like water dunk thing because that's disgusting. I don't know. Like friend of the program, Nathan Pinkstaff, thought he was gonna do that eighteen, eighteen, eighteen challenge, you know, with the eighteen hot dogs and he had them like each individually wrapped with like foil and mustard on them, you know. And he did like 13, I think, like that, 13 or that 14. That was 10 minutes. But it was not in 10 minutes. So, like, if I sit down and they're all out in front of me and I've got mustard on them and I got, like, a water to drink, 
I could probably do some work, but I'm not going to do – there's not a chance I'm getting over 20. I mean, there's the not bi- a chance I'm getting over 15 probably. The big thing of this is this guy trains – to be able to pack as much as in his stomach because yeah. that's why the water, the dipping, the breaking, yeah. the swallowing. His like, jaws. You ever see his – like that's his name, Joey Jaws Chestnut. Like his his muscles in his mouth. Like he's a freakishly looking dude if you if you really get down to it. Yeah. He was on The Amazing Race, by he's, the way. He's from Indiana. Yeah. It was uh, – I don't know. I, when it comes to a number, Braddo, I mean less than 10 probably. Yeah, and I'm not going to be able to eat them fast. Yeah, like, I'm definitely. Like, I might be able to do more than three or four, but I, I, it's I couldn't see me. Eating you start getting to that number but, where you you've eaten miserable. more than three or four at a pause for the cause break before here. <laughs> but that's longer than ten minutes. Bull hockey, we're hammering them off that straight uh, off that glizzy roller. We've had some pause breaks that are like forty five minutes. Uh, yeah, you're right. Is it really necessary? It really. It re- let's start your brick, your brick, your brick. It really is necessary to wash fruits and vegetables before eating them. A few unwashed strawberries can't do much harm, right? Well, many health experts would argue otherwise. Each year, one in ten people get sick by eating unsafe foods, and about 46% of these causes of foodborne illness come from eating vegetables and fruit. There you go, smoke. It is important to take care of your leftovers. No more leaving just random items uncovered in the fridge. I don't well, know. I don't know why Brad O attacked you there. I don't know, but I uh, tell you what, I don't wash fruits or vegetables. But you see how what is it like? Nine people died from boar's head ham. Yeah, listeria. Mm. Pretty wild. I haven't heard of people. Have die you seen from that food poisoning in a while? Have you, have you seen yeah. that the whole boar's head thing? I yeah. like boar's head a lot. I do too. Like when we went on vacation, like that's one of the big deal breakers. Of getting uh, lunch meat with the uh, with my in laws. Oh, Pop Pop's a big lunch meat snob, and if it ain't Boar's Head, then we ain't getting it. That's why he shops up there at our friends more, more for, for less. less. That's yeah. for sure. Well, but, there ain't nothing you can replace with good old sliced Mc- Merkley pit ham. Mm-mm. I love Boar's Merkley Head. Pit has ham. this like uh, London broil roast mm-hmm. beef, and it's kind of like medium rare roast beef. Mm-hmm. Mm. How does the listeria thing happen? Oh, I'd say people just... Well, you eat it, and then you get sick. I tell you what, you're really good at explaining the low-hanging mm. fruit when I need a little in-depth analysis. I guess listeria can't be just regular food. It's a poisoning. bacteria. So does it come from the contamination from the workers? Is it contaminated food product? Well, it was... Is it contaminated... It it was pork. I know it was pork. Like, it was ham, I think. Some, like, specific yeah. ham. So I think hogs... Now, see, now that they've gone more and they say that, you know how you got to have pork well cooked because of the stuff you get from it, the same thing, you get tryptonos, whatever you get from a bear. Trichinosis. That's one. Cause that's turkey, isn't it? No, that's trypanepiphan. How does listeria okay. spread among deli meats? The listeria bacteria can be found in the soil, water, animal feces, and raw materials. So I'm thinking that it's in the it's it's our it's just in the hogs. So they probably didn't they got do a there. good job cleaning them off and had shit all over their foots and the back of their ass. That's a ham. Yeah. You know, if you don't clean all that off real good for you to start butchering, you can get some pretty nasty stuff in the meat there. Oh boy. The bout break has been traced back to boar's head brand meats and sliced delis as well as ready to eat liverwurst. That were contaminated with listeria, according to the epi- epidid- epidemiologist uh-huh. laboratory, and traced back to data reported by the CDC. Yeah, fifty-seven sick and nine dead. Because they can realistically pinpoint this to exactly where it was produced, when it came in, everything about it. Yeah. So listeria bacteria can be found in the soil, water, people. It- can get infected by eating the following raw vegetables that have been contaminated from the soil or from contaminated manure used as fertilizer. So maybe I should wash the veggies. Yeah, probably. I've never washed them. I have never washed them either. And I'm not good at I'm not good at that. Like when it you just get makes a, such a mess, it's all wet. You're not gonna use all of it. Like a head of lettuce, you go wash it off and then that water. When you get a bag of carrots out, you just open it up. Oh, and baby the carrots, down. you don't gotta wash them. They're already ready to eat on baby carrots, oh, I think. Boy. I think it even says it like pre washed. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it does. <laughs> Google box it. You you don't have to wash baby carrots. Do you not? They've already been peeled. Okay. I think. 
I mean, I think that's why it doesn't matter. But I think most of what be- else, Casey? What else has he got? Does it uh, do I have to wash the honey <laughs> Baby deuce? Carrots. The honey deuce, Dave. Like two. <clears throat> a cocktail called the honey deuce has been a winner at the uh, tennis U.S. Open, not golf U.S. Open. Tennis U.S. Open. The twenty-three dollar beverage comes Good in grief. a commemorative cup and is expected to surpass ten million dollars in sales at this year's tournament. $23 for a cocktail? Geez, do the Dutch never recall spending over 20 bucks for a drink? If so, and if so, what was it and where did you have it? P.S. The drink is vodka, lemonade, and raspberry liqueur. Interesting. I may have paid over 20 I know I'm cutting the line. It looks like Mace is thinking. I had a couple... Uh cocktails at the Kid Rock concert doubles just because I think oh, well, that's a double and I think that those were probably or over 20 I had a sh- I don't even know if you call it a shot like when you order really 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 old Irish whiskey mm. that comes in like a rocks glass but it's neat there's no ice in it and I mean, I'm assuming it's a shot, but like you're not supposed to just shoot it. You know what I mean? Like it's in a yeah, it's a sipping. It's situation. a sipping situation, yeah. And it was about. I didn't pay for it, oh, but I re- we talked about this. But I received it at a bachelor party from the brother-in-law of the groom. But you downed it like a shot. I did. Yeah. And then they were all like, "What are you doing, you moron? That was a sixty-four dollar drink or some shit." And I'm like, whoo. News to me, you know what I mean. I uh, here we all go. of my here, here we go here we go. <laughs> I knew it. Here, here we See, it's go. Tra- it was a trap question. You never yeah. had a drink under twenty dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Thought that was about the going rate these days. Uh, I have been fortunate to uh, work for a company that will pick up the meal. So there has been a few times where I have thought, well, if the meal has been taken care of, here's what I would have spent on the meal anyways. Uh, Generally, nicer steakhouses where I've ordered um, a bourbon with uh, just a rocks um, ice sphere Mm -hmm. to sip on uh, that has probably been in the $35 to $40 range that way. That's the only way. But, like, I... When we go out, I'm not a big mixed drink guy anyways Mm -hmm. because I think you get hosed on that. You might as well just buy a shot straight up and order a Coke with it or whatever you're going to do because mainly I drink beer out and about. I can't. I do like beer. Gosh, I do say that. But when I'm at the Hall and Legion and sometimes it's time to go and it's time to uh, get on down the trail, I may have one more nightcap. That's generally That's the only place where I order a mixed drink out. I usually don't anywhere else. So mm-hmm. there we go, Braddo. Thank you, buddy. Uh, we appreciate everything you do for us. Uh, keep that Raider offense churning and going as we are in the uh, uh, – will be when this airs week four of the high school football season, close to being half over there. So there we go. Final thoughts, fellas. Southern Indiana Hardwoods and our buddy Nick Merkley is going to bring you this uh, one more trip around the table, Dave, to wrap up the Friday Variety Show. Southern Indiana Hardwoods wants to remind you that fall time is a perfect time to smoke a rack of ribs, a hearty brisket, or even that massive pork butt you've been holding on to. It isn't soup season yet, and Southern Indiana Hardwoods has an inventory of those wonderful Green Mountain pellet grills ready for you. Now, not only does Southern Indiana Hardwoods carry the Green Mountain pellet grills, but they also have the accessories to go with the grills, and most importantly, top-notch smoking pellets. You can have the perfect cut of meat, but if you don't use quality pellets, you're wasting your time. Give Nick Merkley a call today. All right, big fella, we got. Well, uh, coming up here in the next couple of days, I think this weekend up at Huntingburg is the pumpkin stroll. Uh, the weather's starting to cool down. The leaves are starting to slowly turn. The grass is drier than a popcorn fart. Haven't had much rain. Squirrel season's in full swing. Dove season came in. Goose Early goose season's in. Guys, it's it's almost fall. It'll be here before we know it. 
my favorite time of the whole entire year. Uh, just a breath of fresh air, boys. The humidity is slowly working its way out for a while. Uh, I don't know. I'm starting to get a little happy. Uh, spending some time out in my garage, thanks to my brother Smoke here that helped me out with the TV and the internets and stuff oh, like yeah. that. But uh, got a bunch of Barbie stuff and uh, little girls' uh, toys and things that I need to find new homes for. But other than that, uh, my garage is, is uh, really coming into in the in the shape there. So, uh, peace, love, and positivity. Keep your stick on the ice. Uh, for those listening right now, on Friday the thirteenth, come out to the Holland Fest tonight and buy your People's Choice ticket to sample the barbecue uh, for tomorrow's barbecue fest. We'll be up on the hill by the windmill, five dollars a shot. You'll get uh, eight servings of or eight small little bites of uh, pulled pork uh, to uh, cast your vote for the people's choice. But other than that, guys, uh, it's been a good time tonight, and uh, that's all I got, Dave. Uh, take a little second here so we can talk about gun safety and everything. A clean gun's a happy gun, uh, and that's all I got. I'm I'm just getting all geared up for tonight, so. Amen, brother. <laughs> uh, hey, uh, yeah, um, a big hats off to our friends at Holland Events for putting on Holland Fest. It takes a lot of time uh, for those folks to volunteer and do those things. And obviously, obviously, they could look at us and say, no, we don't want you to be involved in this. But they've allowed us to uh, proudly sponsor our boys overboard who I have. There's three guarantees in life, Dave. I'm adding one. Death, taxes, and when Overboard has the chance to show out to people that have never never heard them before, they're going to go wild. Hell and it's yeah. going to be a hell of a show. So we look forward uh, to the fellas, uh, Alan and Derek, to let her rip. It's going to be a blast. Stop on down and see us. We will obviously be in the beer garden. We will be together. It usually doesn't happen a lot because these guys don't invite me places. But because it's work-related for this side hustle, uh, I'll be there. So... Um, but it's going to be a blast. Uh, big thing is come back Saturday for the people's choice there. Uh, you get a pretty good spread of old Q for only five bucks. That's right. And we make sure those cups are packed and filled to the brim, but, uh, we won't, they we, will, they sure. will. Yeah. So big thank you. Blessing your insurance celebration ice, our buddies overboard that are going to let it rip tonight. Dubois County tire and supply Merkley and sons and Southern Indiana hardwoods for all of their support. And oh, by the way, we got some new merch coming. Amen. Oh, dang. Dutchman out.